Hello everyone, I am Dr. Girish Sadel from the University of Technology of Mauritius and on behalf of my co-authors and colleagues, uh, I'm very pleased to be presenting a paper at the Zinc 2020 conference. The paper is entitled An Evolutionary Multilayer Perceptron Algorithm for Real-Time River Flood Prediction. Our focus is on river flooding based on flash floods. Flash floods, which themselves are characterized by very rapid occurrence within six hours of rainfall events. This, causes, this can cause rivers to overflow and affect the surrounding inhabitants, buildings, as well as the life of people. Floods generally, uh, especially flash floods, gives very limited opportunity for the issue of warnings by the authorities. They are often accompanied by different hazards such as landslides, uh, mud flows, and they cause damage to buildings, so physical damage to the infrastructure, uh, to the economy of the country, and worst of all to the life of people. Our work, uh, this paper, is part of a larger piece of uh, work. The large piece of work is about uh, identifying a modern automated warning system for detecting river flooding in Mauritius, on the island of Mauritius. Uh, we use the term now cursing because we want to predict floods, river flooding, within a short lapse of time, that is within three hours, uh, as opposed to forecast, which can predict over longer periods of time. We tackle this problem by uh, identifying and looking at machine learning algorithms and um, we've noticed that several machine learning algorithms on their own might not suffice and might not be enough so we went out into solving and optimization problems for those machine learning algorithms and we use nature inspired techniques for that purpose when we look at the literature review uh, before 2006 even up to uh, recent years there has been different type of uh, a task or work that has been uh, achieved in that direction and we noticed that uh, uh, the use of machine learning algorithms with optimization techniques gives better results. Uh, of course, there are different ways of measuring the results from here, from a table here. Uh, some of them have measured accuracy, so the higher the value, the better. Others have measured the uh, errors, the rate of error, so the lower the better. Um, talking about a uh, machine learning algorithm, the focus is on artificial neural networks. Uh, artificial neural networks, they try to actually uh, represent, recreate the neurons in the brain of human beings and use that same learning process, artificially of course. So in an artificial neural network, we have a set of neurons and, this, and these set of neurons are then actually um, uh, categorized into different layers. So we have a first layer, which is known as generally the input layer, whereby we have a set of neurons corresponding to the inputs. We have a set of hidden layers between the input and the output layer. Uh, and we can have more than one hidden layer, with which itself would consist of a series of neurons, and of course the output layer. Now this whole architecture, this, uh, this whole set of configuration is itself quite complex. Uh, if we get it wrong, of course, we get a model which does not predict accurately. Now, on top of that, we also have the training of the model. So how do we come up to a prediction model? Is by using different training approaches. So what are the configuration for the training models as well? What values of weight should we use? How many iterations should be uh, configured? How, what is the learning rate that should be used? So all these is actually pretty much very complex. Um, so what we tried to do is we've used nature-inspired algorithms in trying to solve this configuration problem in trying to come up with a solution with a set of parameters for an appropriate artificial neural network. Uh, with our artificial neural network and the term that we're using here is multi-layer perceptron. So we have multiple hidden layers and neurons are also known as perceptrons. So from the perspective of nature-inspired algorithms, uh, we focus on population base, which is divided into evolutionary and swarm intelligence. So genetic algorithm, 
uh, is what we've chosen together with a bat approach, together with a bat algorithm, which is under swarm intelligence. Um, the kinetic algorithm uh, focuses on the aspect of, uh, of finding a best set of configuration. What I mean by this is that it starts with a initial population, uh, compute their fitness, uh, the process of selection, crossover, mutation, and compute fitness again. So we have a second generation. It starts, it's repeat that whole process again, and on and on and on until we have a, the best set of the population. So this is what we've used for uh, configuring the architecture of the multi-layer perceptron. The BAT algorithm, um, on the other hand, is based on collective intelligence of microbats. Those microbats usually uh, uh, they, they, they go and look for food, that is, they try to find their preys, which are very small, tiny insects, in complete darkness, in complete night darkness, and they collaboratively search for that specific prey and identify them. So again, so they can actually to work together to define a set of predefined configurations uh, for a neural network as well as for training the network. So we've used both approaches. Now we've used them in the following order. Of course, we've created an optimized multi-layer perceptron, which is based on trial and error. We've used an MLP with genetic algorithm only, so we apply genetic to uh, derive the configuration. We've applied third one bat algorithm to the MLP to again generate the possible uh, the best architecture and training and, and training configuration. And then we uh, came up with our novel approach, which is an MLP, which is based on BAT. And both the BAT and the MLP are further optimized uh, with a genetic algorithm. Of course, we run a set of experiments. Uh, this is how the uh, MLP and the BAT actually uh, looks like. So you have the genetic algorithm, which actually uh, looks at the BAT architecture because the BAT algorithm also have to be configured. So the configuration, the best configuration is generated from the genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithm then also, of course, generates the best configuration for our feed-forward multi-layer perceptron. And the feed-forward multi-layer perceptron uses the uh, configuration, the, the, the result of the BAT for training. And then, of course, we have a prediction model which can be used for testing the results and uh, finding out the uh, possibility of a flash flood. So um, the experiments, we've, we've gone on experiments to actually evaluate all four approaches and for that we've used a data set of Firquin uh, which has measured the level of water in a river uh, over one, over lapse of one minute over two days representing 320 readings and of course it classifies it into one, two, three, four, five clusters. So high increase has the possibility of creating a flash flood if we know the height of the riverbanks. Now, um, the the uh, we we've also compared our result with that of the uh, approach used by Firkin. Firkin uses a, a traditional MLP and different other approaches like SVM, etc., uh, etc., et linear regression. Um, See, so so uh, with our this represents our uh, optimized MLP, the MLP GA bat and the MLP bat and GA. From a window size of five, from five previous reading, we can notice that there is an increase in accuracy. We are predicting the height of water in the river, and we are using accu the prediction accuracy we are measuring in percentage. So uh, we've reached eighty percent and uh, uh, around 80 percent and uh, we have both the raw attributes and the process attributes when i say raw attributes we use the values as is when we say process we've actually used the mean of all the values that we have and when we look at the window size of 10 with 10 previous reading we have even better result around 81 percent here using bat and ga the the, the for, for a window size of 10 the the bat did not uh we, we did not perform as expected there was some uh underfitting here um, and these two are very close, uh, MLPG and MLPBAT GA. But nevertheless, we've noticed an, an increase in, in, in prediction accuracy. So um, 
Looking at the training time and the prediction time, so when the model is trained, all four models in seconds would take the following values accordingly, so up to 175 seconds, apart from the MLP bad GA, which is taking around 3.7, up to four, around four hours of training time. So this is quite significant. Why? Because we are running one, two, three algorithms uh, on top of the data which is uh, being uh, fed into the training algorithm, into the algorithm. Of course, when it comes to prediction, uh, we don't have a very large difference here, so it's pretty much straightforward. Now, how do we deal with the, uh, this very long pre uh, training time? We, we have the data which are collected, which, and we have the algorithm which is trained, and all this is actually being done offline. So once we have a model which is ready, then we deploy the model in a web service approach using a REST API, which can then, of course, be accessed by different consumer devices, uh, mobile apps, web apps, etc., etc. Now, over time, when uh, data would, all, would be collected from rivers, of course, they can be further used, so it can be used to train, retrain, model but still using an offline approach and then the new model can then be deployed so this solved the training time approach uh, the, the issue with the training time so we've seen that the mlp bad ga uh, to, to conclude uh, has an increase of around seven percent in prediction time which is which we believe is quite appropriate and very important when it comes to uh, flash flood prediction for rivers uh, We've given careful consideration to training time, so we use an offline training approach. And our next uh, uh, step is to look at recurrent neural networks instead of a traditional NLP, because RNN are actually uh, more appropriate for time series data, and our data is time series. So we also had uh, two questions from the uh, TPC. Uh, the first one, which uh, focuses on uh, whether it can be applied in smart homes, and the use of sensors. Yes, our project is based on a series of sensors which collects data from rivers. Uh, like we said, this one focuses on height, so height is one. Flow is num num number two, that is the, the rate of flow per unit time. The humidity, uh, and, and a series of other sensors, right, which is based, which follows a wireless sensor network approach, are collected and then, uh, of course, uh, captured. Uh, on our system in the database and then use for training. That's one. Can this be used in a hot in, in, a, in a smart home ecosystem? Of course, yes, can be used in a smart home, home eco ecosystem. Uh, think about uh, a smart home whereby we try to predict the electric con uh, electricity consumption. So we don't want to go beyond a particular threshold. So this approach can be used to collect uh, data from different appliances and how they are being used. And then the prediction can be made into uh, whether the, 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 there might be an overuse, we might reach a threshold or go beyond that threshold. That could be applied to a series of houses in a city, so that can help at city level. Uh, we can talk about smart cities. Um, we can also talk about offices or build, uh, offices whereby, uh, office, offices which want to actually re uh, reduce their carbon footprint. So again, that could be applied into electrical power consumptions. There are various other applications as well. Uh, so the second question is potential uh, for future research and the real application of the solution. So uh, we are uh, uh, focusing on designing the W wireless sensor network and then to get the uh, sensors uh, in rivers, uh, close to rivers, so that we can capture that data right, and actually bring that data to uh, the, the authorities in Mauritius so that they can issue warning, especially when you have rivers that are actually going out of their beds. So there are very, there are a series of, of, of different, uh, 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 areas, locations around Mauritius which can benefit from this, especially when we have heavy rainfalls. So, uh, thank you very much. I hope, uh, this presentation has given you an insight into the work that we have done. Uh, I'd be glad to uh, answer any questions or reply to any of your emails and hope that you enjoy the conference. Thank you very much.